So we move on to the next um, talk presentation. The next presentation is by uh, Varunam, and he is going to talk about setting up single cell genomics research with limited resources. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Carter, Alex, and Moshe, uh, but also um, Elliot for all the emails and you know, the kind invitation for us to be here. So it's our first time um, at um, any SBA meeting at all. So um, I have to say that um, lots of um, things I'm going to tell you today. It's um, mainly focused on Thailand, um, and many things um, possibly um, came from my um, personal experience. So it's probably not applied to everything else, but um, I, I believe that um, the situations and facts that I'm going to present to you today is also apply to many countries, um, including um, like Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, and Vietnam as well. So I couldn't, I'm afraid I couldn't say much about equity, um, to be honest. The first time I got an email from Alex, I was thinking about um, this is something to do with the stock market. But anyway, um, sorry, that's, that's a back joke. Anyway, so um, hopefully I can tell you something about Thailand and uh, sorry, the situations that we went into at that moment. All right, talking about Thailand, uh, I think this is what uh, most people think about. Um, so basically, nice beaches, uh, temples, and to some uh, full moon party. I don't know why you're smiling, Alex, but anyway, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna skip that. So anyway, um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the other side of the story of Thailand, um, mainly on the economic research. So um, I'd like to start with uh, minus Thailand with some numbers. So basically, we have about um, 70 million um, in terms of population, so that's about 90. In the world, um, so GDP, we are 25th. <coughs> However, if you think about like GDP per capita, we are um, at um, 77. So that sort of tells you something about um, equity in Thailand. So uh, more importantly, uh, in terms of research projects, um, at the moment, uh, we spend less than 1% uh, of GDP, which is um, how similar to uh, some countries in Africa, based on uh, this one top. And that's um, the government and private sector combined together. Um, this, uh, I spent a bit of time thinking about this slide, to be honest. Um, this just came out um, less than two weeks ago. So it's about the future um, of the IMD in Thailand. So I have to uh, stress that um, this figure, or this photo, doesn't represent um, the opinion of myself or any of my lab members. So it's just to show that you know how the press, um, this is from uh, post Bank of course, which is um, how to pull into New York Times uh, or something like that. How they think about you know, how um, the government spend uh, budget on some different priorities, um, and clearly it's not, uh, not in R&D. So I have to say this is not like um, accurately, um, stat uh, statistically, but um, that's just how the press see, see things um, at the moment. So um, a little bit more about um, academic um, environment in Thailand. So uh, we had about like 300 universities, um, but when it comes to quality, um, the best university in Thailand, um, including uh, where I'm from, um, at Georgia University, we have about um, 600 to, to 800 based on time higher education. And um, if we look at the number of research per million, so we have about like 300, and, which is quite you know, far away from uh, the world average of um, 1,000 or something like that. Um, one of the main things that I'd like to tell you is that um, so this top, so called top university in Thailand, um, we I wouldn't say like we um, completely um, government funded, but then um, yeah, mainly the, the funding uh, still came from the government, even though we're not like, directly um, under the government. So which tells you a little bit about you know how important the, the government funding is. So um, just uh, something about where I'm working at the moment. It's called um, Mahidol University. So it was founded as a university of um, medical science. So it's been uh, we really you know focused on medical science. So um, we have two medical schools and three um, large hospitals. And, and basically, um, so even though we're about like 600 um, in terms of world ranking, but when it comes to uh, medical training, um, we're about like 62, which is um, a lot better. So these are some of, uh, of the statistics. Um, so in Thailand, in terms of the balance between uh, male and female, we don't have that problem at all. If there's anything, I think I'm looking at my colleagues, there are many more female uh, professors than male in Thailand. Okay, so um, just if I may, I'd like to tell you just one slide about myself. So actually, I, um, I did my PhD in, in Cambridge with Sarah Teichmann, and that was before um, she started doing uh, single cell. I think when, when I was finishing my PhD, people just started talking about um, C1 uh, machines, if you're familiar with that. Um, so 
Or got to mention that um, that's about the same time as Katrina. Katrina was in, uh, was in uh, Cambridge as well. So um, as a, a government-funded student, so I was applying to go back to Thailand um, to work as a lecturer for three years um, at McGill University. So during that time, um, so even though I didn't uh, have my own funding, but I was, I was able to continue um, to work um, by doing a lot of uh, mathematics because um, clearly that's kind of like a I wouldn't say easier, but maybe um, you need a, le a lot less money to run the mathematics lab. But then two years after that, I, I thought that I would like to do something, um, you know, more with experimental science as well, like doing experiment, and also doing um, computational. That's why I went back to Cambridge to do my uh, postdoc with uh, degree. And then after that, in 2015, um, I went back to my third again to start my own book. So um, as you know, the title of my talk, uh, I, I'd like to talk something about you know, studying something like this in a um, kind of um, limited resources. So uh, I thought um, it might be good to mention that um, the first grant we have in Thailand, so we got um, 2,000 US dollars for two years, and that's not even like uh, you know, the grant that um, they give to everyone. So you have to you know, quite you know, compete. It's quite fierce on competitions. I think the success rate um, was like 20% something like that. And basically, um, on top of that, they expect you to publish one paper. So that's um, what I'm talking um, I'd, I'd see if you laugh, so maybe, um, I don't know if that's agree or disagree. But anyway, um, not until uh, two years ago that I, I was um, quite fortunate um, to write a grant uh, with my former advisor, Sarah Teichman, um, on using a Newton Advanced Fellowship. Um, so that's how we can start uh, doing single cell in Thailand. So that's the, the grant that we get. All right. So at the moment, um, the situation in Thailand, um, so this um, single cell or initiative in Thailand um, was mainly, as I said, um, between Macedonia University and uh, Sarah Teichman group at uh, the Wilkin Pasanker Institute. And right now we have been uh, expanding and disseminating the technique to different uh, universities in Thailand. So that's uh, Sarah's group. But also we, we also working with uh, Martin Kemper on computational aspects as well. This is how our, uh, our group looks like. Um, so basically, uh, this is myself and my close collaborators, um, Dr. Hoan Pan Matanga Song Matu Pong. So basically, without um, her, it's pretty difficult to start um, this whole thing together. So in my group, um, so we've been working on something else before we, we start doing um, single cell. So right now, half of my group are working on gene expression in plant, in rice and rubinopsis, which is um, obviously you know, something quite important um, to Thailand as a agricultural country as well. Um, and maybe how of uh, contacts will also um, start working on single cell right now. And um, basically, um, pretty much all the lab members are grad students, just because, um, well, only one thing is that we, it's quite hard to afford um, you know, a postdoc because normally you have to hire them uh, at the salary, which is higher than yourself. That, that's not quite a problem, but basically, um, it's hard to find someone or PhD that would like to start being postdoc in Thailand. All right, so um, once we you know, start to get um, things rolling, um, so we managed to get um, the first two machines um, that would allow us to do a uh, single cell. So um, I had to mention, you know, a specific name, but basically the first one we got was, um, was 10x because it's just the easiest one to get. But also we got um, the cycle machines um, to do it in Smart Seed 2. Um, so basically right now we can do both um, play a bit and also uh, not the players um, single cell. Um, this was um, the first day that we started doing um, single cell in our lab. So that was the, the next machine. And also, um, we also run, um, you know, use, uh, doing, sorry, doing Smart Seed 2 using the, um, the robot as well. So um, on top of that, um, so we thought um, it's easier enough for us to uh, establish, sorry, I, I wouldn't say easy enough, uh, it's quite difficult um, to establish um, a lab to do single cell. But we thought like this would be even better if we can disseminate this um, you know, knowledge to somebody else. Because uh, when we started, we were, we were the first and uh, yeah, we were the first lab to start doing single cell in Thailand. So we thought like uh, we might as well just do uh, this workshop. So we have a one day workshop followed by two days um, of um, hang on experiment in Thailand. Um, that was the first one and that's the only one that we did in uh, 2018. So we have some, uh, you know, experienced people from the uh, first Sanker Institute um, that came over to Thailand to help us. So this is how the, the program looks like. This is the first day. 
So um, basically, um, the program cover um, you know, different aspects of single cells. Um, we um, we were pretty surprised that um, there are more than I think 150 people from all over Thailand um, came to attend the conference. Uh, and then uh, on the second third day, we actually have um, you know hand-on um, workshops. So there's two groups. The first group is doing uh, 10x genomics technique, and the second group um, they were doing a uh, smart cell technique. So that's what the, the workshop did. Okay. So um, basically, and uh, this looks pretty familiar to many of you, and it's not that special at all. But uh, for us, this is um, kind of iconic. Um, you know, the first, like um, I would say, like um, uh, made in Thailand, um, single cell, and, and basically, uh, it's just um, the one that we keep showing to people in Thailand. Um, you know that uh, we can do this kind of thing. And basically, it's just um, uh, single cell from healthy patients, um, sorry, healthy persons, um, and keep it to see. And basically one of the, the um, people who analyze this data is um, Jadrika, my drug student, who is here. And uh, basically, you know, it's just a proof of concept showing that you, know, we, you can actually do that in Thailand. And uh, you know, um, when we show this to immunologists, they're pretty impressed you know, at the power and you know, um, things that um, single cell can, you can do. So right now we move on to work on different type of um, of patient um, samples, not just um, of um, healthy PBMC. So this is, um, by the way, this is um, the PBMC from from Thai individuals. Which, um, if maybe um, uh, she are interested, we can talk a little bit more. So hopefully we can uh, expand something after this. All right. So um, I, I would like to um, conclude my talk by um, concluding on. Uh, how about questions that Alex um, uh, well, advised me to talk about, which is the barriers and opportunities of um, doing you know, this type of technologies in Thailand, but also in other, I would say, like middle income countries around the world. So I sort of um, divided this into different sections, um, starting with funding. So, um, sorry, in terms of funding, um, we were quite lucky to, um, to get the funding from the new funds. But that covered only uh, consumable and, and trainings, uh, which is good. However, um, we thought that was um, a good start because we can use um, the new fund as leverage to negotiate with our universities to get um, you know, um, the money to buy the equipment. So basically, um, without you know, um, the new fund, we would not be able to get the equipment from, from our universities. So in a way, um, we thought it quite likely to manage to, to get things start. However, um, the cost of running, um, you know, doing single cell, at least in Thailand, is still pretty high. So in two years, even though we have the machines, we have the people to do it, I think we managed to run um, possibly about like 40 um, samples of it in two years. So it could have been, you know, a lot more. Um, so I would say um, in the, you know, smart effect side, that would be, you know, like, yeah, pretty good, but that could be better. Um, the second part is uh, bureaucracy. This is the part that um, I spend most of my time um, solving out things. So, uh, because um, it, the new fund um, is basically uh, last two years, and we spent a whole first year getting the machines, you know, and trying to get all the documents sorted. And um, in fact, after we got the machines, um, we got um, basically um, the, the state um, auditors paid <coughs> the receipt to our lab. Just to check on, you know, what's going on. Why do we have to buy, you know, the machines that nobody else um, used in Thailand before? So we, we even got asked, like, you know, why can't we just do something that everybody else, you know, did or something like that? So um, that that gave me to think that okay, um, we, we probably have to do something to, um, you know, help the public understand a little bit um, in that sense. So anyway, I didn't say anything back back to to uh, to her, but just explain, you know, that we, we need to um, go forward and do something else that. Nobody else does. So I would say, like in terms of um, bureaucracy, it's not so good in Thailand right now. Um, so in terms of supporting facilities <coughs> and infrastructures, this can be uh, broken down to uh, different things. So I think at least um, in our university, we we were quite fortunate to be in the place that we have um, pretty much all the basic lab equipment. Um, so uh, when I start um, working in Thailand, so we managed to set up um, the HPC facilities. So in terms of computing, we, we're pretty um, well equipped. And also because um, in Thailand, we're dealing with lots of um, diseases, sample, so we have pretty much um, a good setup of um, you know, 
ESL um, flexibility and so on. So I would say um, pretty good for um, infrastructures, <coughs> also supporting facilities. So my um, the next one is on research communities and the roaming. This is the part that I, I basically keep me going, basically um, to um, to be able to work on um, you know some unique and niche um, samples. So um, <coughs> it's the same in, in African countries and also in Asia. We have some some research questions that um, you know it's been there for a long time and. Hopefully, some technology how um, advances like this can help us um, go further. Also, I think we were really um, fortunate to have um, you know a young group of um, students very enthusiastic to like work and you know learn something new. Um, and also, in terms of collaboration, it's pretty open in Thailand, um, and everyone can help each other. As I said, um, we start at Mangkok University, but right now, um, all the big um, medical schools in Thailand they on board and. Basically, they came to use our um, 10x machine, which is um, free of charge, um, by the way. Um, in Thailand right now, so we just started something called um, Genomics Thailand, which is a big project that you know sort of follow, um, I guess, UK, Genomic UK or something like that, where um, the government uh, plan to sequence up to 50,000 um, genomes within the next five years. That's nothing to do with um, you know single cell or um, human certainly last at all, but you know, since basically um, the aim is just to get the reference of higher populations, so why not just try to you know, link the, um, the single cell and you know, the human cell last thing as well. So that's, um, I would say that's a good opportunity. Okay, so I think uh, that's, that's still pretty good. So the last thing I'd like to mention, uh, which um, a few people touched upon um, earlier, is public engagement. So I think it's, it's um, do you remember um, my story um, saying that you know when we, we got uh, visited by um, the state auditors, I mean, she, she basically asked why we had to do this because you know it would be a lot easier to do something that you know everybody else does, right? Um, but basically, I think if we can, um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the word. Sorry, I'm trying to, to be careful with the word here. Maybe uh, try to explain or yeah, I mean to to. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I try to avoid the word educate because I mean that's that's a bit too far, but basically you explain um, and there's quite the importance of doing this, I think. Um, by improving public engagement, it would go back to uh, you know, improve the funding situation and also bureaucracy as well in the long run. And um, so in fact um, I was talking to my uh, grad student this morning, uh, Chandrika, and she's uh, running, I think you guys you and your sister are running, right? you have it on YouTube channel or something, right? Okay. So I was just, you know, asking. Like, actually, I'm, I'm not sure what their YouTube channel is all about. Maybe fashion, or you know, something like teenager stuff. But since she's here already, so I try to ask whether you know, maybe you want to do like, um, like special episode of your YouTube, you know, take on a uh, human cell so or something. So no pressure, right? In, in public office. Anyway, I think that's still um, a lot of opportunities there. So um, at last, I'm taking together. I think. Um, at least I think in Thailand and many countries um, in the same situations, um, we can go. I think there's, there's lots of opportunity, but um, we can do even better. And hopefully, after this um, conference, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know, chatting with you guys and, and see how we can improve the situation um, together with human self advice in some capacity. All right, and with that, I, I'd like to thank everyone again for listening. And now, those are my um, collaborators and funding bodies. Thank you, that was a great talk. Enjoyed it. Um, Thanks so much. I was just I couldn't help thinking that this equity in terms of like you know comparing across countries is also true for institutions within a particular country. So for example, you know, my own experience is very much like yours. Um, you know, I, I I sort of like started a lot of the single cell genomics very much kind of on my own and being helped by my collaborators. Firstly, by Chloe Villani from the Broad, who helped me with Smart C2, and then Sarah, uh, subsequently with you know downstream sort of uh, platforms like 10x, etc. And and we also heard from your father about how you know you always have these helping hands, and and at the end of the day, you know to become empowered and to become independent, so that you can actually contribute uh, in a meaningful way. And this is sort of the network of capabilities and the community and culture that you want to 
kind of propagate uh, within this context. But I also couldn't help feeling that some of these things mirrors the sort of the, the kind of um, issues women have had in terms of gender equality, you know, wanting to be independent, wanting to be recognized, wanting to be seen as equally capable, and perhaps there is quite a lot that we can learn uh, from that. Hi, my name is Julie Makan and I work in Tanzania. So this has just been really, really informative participating in this um, in this meeting. And my comment is is to um, your experience in that I think what you've done and what um, the presenter from India, the chair, uh, is really demonstrated that it is possible to do good science in, in areas where there isn't good science happening. Um, the question, sorry, the first question is to you is when you made that decision not to participate in HAPAP, and you mentioned this again in terms of when you look back, you would have been part of a lot of more paper, that, you know, that would, have you had? Again, this is the experience that we've had. Have you had people from within India and outside of India kind of say, you made a mistake? Uh, made a mistake. You made a mistake in opting out of HAPNA. If I and, um, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll finish. So that's, that's the, the first kind of question. I think the second question is, is not a question, but more of a comment, is what you've, you've um, highlighted, and I think you probably um, under underrepresented the magnitude of the bureaucracy and the management that you have to do in Thailand and in many places. And um, kind of maybe you want to talk a little bit about that because I think that's quite important in terms of being able to address some of the equity or um, abilities to do that. And then finally, this is just a general um, thing, um, is that when you're having these partnerships, then um, um, I, 10 years ago, I had this um, objective that when I reach the age of 50, I will retire. So I've got one more year, so I've got a lot of pressure on me. And, and um, I have three daughters, and one of the things that we teach them, and this is um, my husband and I, is that you've got to be able to do two things. The first is that you've got to be willing to die with the devil. And we teach them that because I think it's really important for you to be able to listen to others who have completely opposing views from yourself. Because if you're not able to do that, then you won't be able to progress because we're all different. And then the second thing, and I think this comes back to um, you opting out of Papa, is that you've got to be willing to leave the table when it goes against what you do. So maybe you want to comment on those two things? Thank you. So Julie, I, I, I really don't know what would happen if um, I was not even uh, marginally successful. I think I've been marginally successful uh, in, in genomics. Uh, so if I wasn't um, even marginally successful, then I think I would have been criticized hugely. Uh, but because of whatever I've done, you know, after having said no to APMAP, uh, I think I wasn't criticized as much and people haven't told me that I made a mistake. As a matter of fact, people believe that that was good because then uh, it helped me build uh, labs within the institution. But all of this, I must acknowledge, could not have happened without the huge support that I got from people who were outside of my country, primarily because those, that kind of support wasn't available within the country. Uh, and, and I'm very, very grateful to a large number of people outside of my country who actually helped. Uh, and uh, you know, what it meant in terms of uh, saying that we're not participating in HackMap, I do not know, but uh, again, I'm very grateful to people of that. Um, let me make a comment on the bureaucracy thing a little bit. Yeah, I guess I am, um, in my opinion, I, I thought, um, the reason I mentioned this is because um, I think we have to recognize this is the problem, but for me, I, I never use that as an excuse not to do things, if that makes sense to you. So I think maybe the first time is harder, but you know, um, 
once you, you start doing that, then you know the next steps would be a bit easier. Um, at least in my opinion, I think when, when we got this uh, Newton fund, it would have been a lot easier for me to do our experiment um, in the UK, basically in the Savvy's lab, and then perhaps you know take all the samples, sorry, take all the data back to analyze because you know this have been sometimes takes like, a lot longer to analyze than, than to just you know do the experiment. But um, at that time, we made a decision that you know we have this opportunity to start something new anyway, even though it's harder. But you know it's it's quite fulfilling once you do that. And I think in terms of like you know, training for students and you know other people, it's yeah, I think it's quite really. So I think in the end, yeah, it's, it's harder at the beginning, but yeah, I think I feel a lot more better better to do it this way. If that makes sense. Thank you for mentioning Ida. We would love to have you in the Asian Consortium. <laughs> All right, is that yes? Yeah. Let's see you. Okay. Thank you for your nice presentation. I'm Joseph Tsubengo from Malawi. Uh, if I, I, I look at the three presentations and four, uh, Bangladesh, Thailand, and India, and again, even from the African uh, the, um, presenters, one sees that there was a kind of a champion, charismatic uh, persons, uh, champions, who, who are willing to do something. And uh, lucky enough, they were empowered and recognized. I just wanted to say, I think uh, HCF, uh, you might say, I just should also do the same, uh, looking at the champions around the world, empowering them, uh, because this is in line to what the professor, the distinguished professor said about uh, the scientific eco capability, but hiding somewhere. So I just feel that uh, it's interesting to see the pattern that there is one individual um, again from Ghana, somebody building something from the scratch, and this is a I think that's what when we are talking about equity is to discover those kind of talents and support them. <coughs> can, can I just make a quick comment on that? So I appreciate that um, you know I mean it's a pretty nice work and possibly compliment. But being honestly with myself, I, I don't see myself as you know champions or something like that at all. I, I, to be honest, I hate being on the spotlight. Um, but basically, I think in terms of um, to be like a link between you know a whole communities like you know around the world to um, you know people in Thailand, um, that would be something I'm, I'm pretty happy to do. As I probably mentioned to Alex early on, I, I think um, basically if you are the only one in your country doing that thing, sometimes you know people um, or the government or um, Policymaker, they don't feel like you know that's being that important. But I think one thing that um something that um, like the communities like SEA for example could help is that you know to to show that you're being part of a big, bigger picture. You know everybody else in the in the world doing the same thing. Then I think that would um allow um people in, in each country to see uh, the bigger picture. I think. So in, in terms of like being the link, yeah, that would be something. 